Okay, so tonight we're going to show you how we make our bread here in this home. It's fairly easy and I've seen you guys make it uh, and show me all your, your work. And now uh, I'm going to show you how we make it. And this is Stella. So first we need three cups of bread flour and um, two teaspoons of salt. Salt. And then we also need half a teaspoon of active, active dry yeast, which is here. Um, I'll put the bread flour here because I've already measured it first. It's three cups. Let's put it in a large container because it rises. There's my dead thumb. Okay, that's three cups. And then put your salt. Okay, and then sweetie, can you just fill me here? I'm going to put the yeast. This is active dry yeast. Um, oops, I keep it in the freezer. So it doesn't, um, I don't know, I read it somewhere. That's half a teaspoon of dry yeast. So you put it in, okay, mix it up a little bit. And then pour the water in gradually. Mix first. Now, um, we, as you notice, we're doing it manually. We don't have a fancy mixer because it's really that easy. And you just need to make this a shaggy dough. That's the word that they use. And when you see what a shaggy dough looks like, it looks like it sounds. There you go. Shaggy dough. Did you put two teaspoons of salt? Yeah. Yeah? Sure? You sure, sure. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go, shaggy dough, go. So what we do is we mix this and we let it sit overnight. Here, that's getting shaggy looking. You see? And it's really known as the no need dough because you don't need it. You don't need to need it. <laughs> okay, I need your tough. Okay, so you just mix it like this. Make sure um, the wet dough touches all the dry ingredients. And that's what shaggy dough looks like. Right, stuff? Mm -hmm. So you kind of, so you don't need, but you kind of mix. Um, yeah. And then you let it sit overnight or for 10 hours covered in plastic. Um, so it needs to be airtight. Okay. So a lot of people are asking, do I refrigerate it? Well, I live in Manila. My kitchen gets hot and I don't refrigerate it. I just let it sit overnight. We're going to let it sit for 10 hours and you will see us again tomorrow morning. Um, and we're going to do the baking. Right, Stel? Yep. Just in time for your brekkie. <laughs> what are we going to eat? Egg. Egg. This is what the dough looks like. Uh, well, we just finished mixing it a few minutes ago. And then um, I'm saving on saran wrap or cling wrap. So I'm using this silicone cover that's like, it can withstand heat. You can even use it in the oven if you want. But I use it as a cover, a reusable cover, because it's really airtight. Look, see? That's it. Okay, good morning. It's uh, This has been sitting here for about maybe 11 hours, and that's what it looks like. The dough has risen. So we're going to be preparing that, but first we need to heat our oven. This is a Dutch oven. People are asking me. The size is 24. It's uh, right there. It's made of cast iron. Preheat your oven to 450 degrees Fahrenheit or 232 degrees Celsius. When you reach the desired temperature, put your Dutch oven uh, in there for 30 minutes. Preheat the Dutch oven for 30 minutes. You don't want to skip that step. While your um, Dutch oven is heating for 30 minutes at a very, very high heat, you just more flour on the surface. Now my thumb is injured, so there's going to be no touching from my thumb here. This is the no need bread. Take it into a ball. You don't really need it. You just roll it. It's uh, known as the artisanal bread. So the more rustic it looks, the better. Oh, look at that. See, it kind of looks like a loaf. So it's round. Oh, tempted to touch it with my other hand. See, one hand baking. Right. So you just let it sit for another 30 minutes, covered loosely in a plastic. Um, like I said, I'm minimizing my use of saran wrap, so I'm going to be using this, another silicone cover. Let's just let it sit like that. 
and for extra drama. I don't know, I see this on YouTube. Let's cover it the best. So 30 minutes. I took a peek and the silicone cover is too heavy, was too heavy, so I propped it up in some glass to allow the bread to, you know, rise. 30 minutes and our dough stretch a little bit. Her uh, Dutch oven has heated for 30 minutes, uncovered, and now you have to lift it up and put the dough in there carefully. I don't normally do it this way, but because I am injured, I will, and I'm going to pour it in here. No! Throw it in. That's it. Look at that. Now, people are worried about whether it's going to stick or not. It won't stick because the, uh, the Dutch oven has been heating for 30 minutes. So you put it in, cover it now. Very, very hot. Cover it for 30 minutes. Now we um, remove the cover. Oh, beautiful bread. Look at how beautiful it is. Keep it in there for another 12 minutes, uncover. Now our bread is done. We oh Look how beautiful our bread is. And it didn't stick. It didn't stick. Just to show you, uh, here's our bread and it didn't stick at all. People were concerned about that. The key is to make your Dutch oven really hot. And now we're ready to eat our bread. But we want to let it cool down, see? Mm. This be on the outside, should be on the inside. So let's give it some time to cool off. Here's our bread, ready to slice. Uh, we're going to be eating it with scrambled egg, pesto, some salami, butter, whatever you want. Okay, so here's our bread. I put a little bit too much uh, oh my gosh, flour, but it's okay. We can just dust it off. Oh. Normally we wait for it to cool, but we can't wait anymore because it's breakfast time, so it's really hot. That's a lot of flour. Normally I don't put that much. Okay, there you go. Ouch! <gasps>